So I think this says it all. And um, I always like to emphasize that the reason I'm very fond of this particular slide, I use it all the time, is because somehow this connotes to me the physicality of our nation and the growth of the real economy. You know, there's actual economic activity happening in villages, in factories, in towns, in cities. And this sort of manifests that picture to me in my mind that where there is growth, there is capital formation. Where there is capital formation, there is growth. So it's a wonderful virtuous cycle. And we are today as a nation in that wonderful place where one is reinforcing the other. Now the question is, Page down also not working. Hmm. You just tell me. Now that will work. Maybe that's what they did. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. So you can leave it now. I think it's good. <clears throat> so I want to focus, uh, you know, a lot more today on a certain group of assets in our country: the REITs, INVITs, and MUNI bonds. Mr. Bhatia referred to it briefly in his speech. I think that, you know, very often when I speak particularly to youngsters, and it's interesting that they ask me a question, because they say, we want to be where the puck will be. Right? They know that their parents and their so-called seniors have been part of a previous revolution. They have taken the benefits of high growth of certain sectors in the previous generation. Now, the youngsters today are interested in what is going to be the high growth area of the future. They want to know where the puck will be so that they position themselves at a time and place where they will have a tailwind to really help them grow as well. So here's my answer to that question. That answer to that question, in my view, is REITs and WITs and MUNI bonds. Now, why is this? Within SEBI, we've done a very simple exercise, sort of like a back of the envelope exercise, where we asked ourselves, how big can this market be? And we reached the conclusion that just as our equity markets today are at roughly one-time uh, one GDP, right? The entire market cap is about one-time GDP. We believe that the total value of our REIT, INVIT, and MUNI bonds ecosystem can be another one-time GDP. So that is the opportunity for growth which is available to us as a nation. Now, why do we believe this? In a very simple sort of way, the logic is, if you look at all the goods and services that are produced by the corporate sector today, because that is what manifests itself in the form of the GDP linked market value. Right? Now, if you look at that, and you look at in parallel, what is the value of the entire real estate infrastructure and municipal services that are provided in the country? Where is the balance? So in theory, the value of REITs, INVITs, and MUNI bonds will far exceed what is today the value of goods and services produced by the corporate sector. Now, in this context, what is it that we as SEBI See as the building blocks. And that's why, again, I love this little slide because every business, every ecosystem has building blocks. And it's the regulator's job to ensure that those building blocks are in place to facilitate that growth. So what is it that we have put in place? The most important thing we realized is that the strength of our equity markets comes from our retail investors, not just directly their participation in the stock market and holding shares of companies, but through mutual funds, through insurance, through the pension funds, and so on. Now, what this reflects is really fractional ownership of companies, right? That's what shareholding is. It is fractional ownership of companies. So in the similar manner, fractional ownership of real estate and fractional ownership of infrastructure is where the strength of the country will lie. So what have we done to facilitate this and to put the building blocks in place to facilitate that growth? The first thing is for us as a regulator to get comfort to go to retail investors, to, for us to go to our 
parents to our in-laws to our uncles to our aunts to our nieces and nephews to say you know this is a very good product you should invest in it we need to have that comfort so the first thing that we have done is we have ensured that the governance elements of these asset classes and the disclosure elements of these asset classes are now something that gives us the comfort and gives us the confidence to go and tell our retail investors that we are comfortable with the way these things are structured we are comfortable with the disclosure and the governance norms you can now without worrying you can think about investing in these products so that is one of the first things that we did over the last couple of years the second thing that we have done is to bring down the minimum investment size because naturally these products which were considered sort of high risk and therefore the minimum entry price was kept high we have steadily brought it down and the intention the commitment to the industry is down the line we will bring it down even further so making it very much affordable as i often like to refer this is the sashiization of financial products that we need to do and with a very very small amount somebody should be able to go and own a fractional ownership of these assets the third thing that we have done in this context is to facilitate innovation and to facilitate digitization of this whole ecosystem um using the 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 now i would say concept of framework that we have in the country of saying that there is public infrastructure and private innovation so in the markets while the infrastructure is not strictly public uh, is not strictly public for instance the exchanges form the basic infrastructure the depositories form the basic infrastructure of our markets they do perform the role of public infrastructure even though they are in somewhat uh, private hands in a diverse and diversified manner so allowing for platforms like the online bond platform for instance allowing now you've recently seen the notification on small and medium reits the objective is that we should now facilitate many more smaller and smaller and smaller units of this ownership to be diversely held and democratically held across the country by our citizens what is true for reits is also true for invits and we have a lot of belief in the way in which this infrastructure is going to grow in our country because with every foreign investor that i meet i find that the interest in our invit structures is growing by the day there used to be trepidation that the way that the banking system and we've all been bankers mr bhatia and i often laugh about it we've burnt our hands ourselves in the infrastructure sector we know the pitfalls of that but the way that invits have been structured the way that there are escrowed accounts the way that there is a ring fencing against bankruptcy all of those aspects have resulted in a high level of confidence that the investors now show in our invit assets so there is a huge appetite for this so for all the youngsters who are looking and wondering as to which area of the financial sector they should enter into you're wondering where the high growth is going to come from i can share with you that the level of investor interest both from particularly from foreign investors in the invit space is very very significant bonds this is another one of my favorite pictures and i was uh, advised uh, advised uh, in, in a in a forum where i recently used this thing ki hamara ek udar ek indian hero bhi hona chahiye maine kaha theek hai agli baar akshay kumar ko wahan pe dal denge so you know the time has come we all know and we are all delighted that now government of india bonds will be part of the global indices uh, and that automatically means that a lot of passive investment will come into the country the reason we are delighted is that once a benchmark and a yield curve has been established for the sovereign debt then there is a lot of confidence in terms of investing in the corporate debt as well so we are expecting that on the back of the inclusion of sovereign debt in the global indices there will be a significant interest in corporate debt and so it won't be long before we have an akshay kumar standing over there and uh, certainly i have asked one of my colleagues to say yaar kuch ai vai lagao aur wahan pe akshay kumar ko bithao okay so we are going to do that very soon but i think the important thing is to take stock of where we are already this is a very little known fact but if you look at our bond market even at, as it exists today 
While the secondary market has relatively very low liquidity because most of the investors are buy and hold kind of investors, the primary market is actually very robust. So what's really happening, we see here, this is a percentage which is reflecting that if the entire corporate sector in India is borrowing 100 rupees from the banking system, how much is it borrowing from the bonds? through the markets, through the bond market. So as you can see, it reached a peak of about 68, almost 70%. And there was a reason for that, uh, you know, uh, Chief Economic Advisor also mentioned about how certain credit deposit ratios in the economy were moving. But if you see, and our expectation is that this number around the 60% mark is actually a number that we can expect to be stable. So for every 100 rupees that the banking system gives to the corporate sector, the bond market gives 60 rupees. This is not small, okay? And we've only just gotten started in terms of retailizing and facilitating uh, a wider and easier spread of bond investments, particularly through the online bond platform which our teams have facilitated. So we expect this growth really to be quite significant. And with the focus that we have on muni bonds, again, this is something that we hope Across the country, we are seeing more and more traction. Mr. Bhatia is personally leading this charge uh, in favor of you know, facilitating this. And we expect to see a lot of growth. So another area of high growth uh, for the youngsters to focus on. In all of this growth, as has been discussed, the focus of today's conference is sustained capital formation. And we are very clear that we need that capital to come from everywhere. We need the domestic capital. So you have that 500 rupee note there very very, very closely to be seen. But we need this capital coming from every part of the world because we are a capital deficient nation. For the aspiration of growth that we have, for the capacity of capital that we can actually absorb, we don't have a savings rate that will allow that to happen at this point in time. So we need the foreign capital. And SEBI is committed to making this happen because we see our fundamental role as facilitators of capital formation and therefore, the objective to say that the ecosystem should be such, there should be trust, there should be faith in the ecosystem, and the mechanism should be flexible enough to accommodate the needs of every single investor who wants to come in to provide capital to fuel the growth in the country. And that is what we are all here to talk about. And I'm hoping that the next few days will give us, uh, as, as was said earlier, some good insights into what we can do to make this the reality that we're all well on the path to. Thank you.